Hi, this is Shay Jackson with Hype Math. Today, we will be reviewing a third grade math test prep video. It will be over the Star Math Test 2013 questions number one to number five. Let's get started. Our first problem says, which point best represents 13 on the number line below? A, point W, B, point X, C, point Y, D, point Z. What are we looking for? We are looking for the point that best represents 13 on the number line. What information can help us find the answer? Looking at the number line, we can see that the points are counted in half points. So it's 10, 10 and a half, 11, so on up until the end of the number line where it ends in 14. Since we know that the number line is counting in half points, are there any answer choices that we can immediately cross out because we know that they're wrong? Again, looking at the number line, we are counting in half points, 10, 10 and a half, 11. So what would W be? What number would X be? What number would Y be? What number would Z be? Let's see if there are any answer choices we can cross out. If you said A, B, and C, you are correct because W would be 11 and a half, X would be 12 and a half, I'm sorry, would be 12, so let me start again. W would be 11 and a half, X would be 12, Y would be 12 and a half, Z would be 13, the next hash mark would be 13 and a half, and then we would end with 14. So again, our correct answer is D, point Z. Let's move to the next question, number two. Belinda made five gallons of fruit punch for a party. There are eight pints in each gallon of punch. Which expression is in the same fact family as eight times five is equal to 40? F, five times 40, G, 8 plus 5, H, 40 divided by 8, J, 40 minus 8. What are we looking for? We are looking for the expression that is in the same fact family as 8 times 5 is equal to 40. What information can help us find the answer? Well, the eight times five is equal to 40. This information is what can help us find out, find the correct answer for which expression is in the same fact family. Are there any questions, I'm sorry, are there any answer choices that we can cross out because we know that they are wrong. And again, this is a good step to do because eliminating or crossing out wrong answers improves your chance of getting the answer correct, of getting the, the question correct or choosing the correct answer. If you said answer choices F, G, and J can be crossed out, you are correct. Now let's take a look. 8 times 5 is equal to 40. So F says 5 times 40. Well, 5 times 40 is 200, so it wouldn't be in the same fact family as 8 times 5 is equal to 40. Since we have multiplication, we know that G and J can be crossed out because one is addition and one is subtraction, but we're multipl multiplying. So we would, would need to look for um, an expression that either has multiplication in it or division. So our answer choice is H, 40 divided by eight. Question number three, 
A three-dimensional figure is shown below. How many vertices does this figure have? A, 10, B, 16, C, 24, D, 8. What are we looking for? We are looking for the number of vertices that this figure has. What information can help find the answer? Okay, a vertex, plural for vertices, is a point where two or more lines meet. Basically, it's a corner. So looking at this figure, I see I have two sides because it's three-dimensional. How many corners or lines meet up together? Now that we know the information of what is a vertices, Looking at the figure, are there any answer choices we can cross out because we know that they're wrong? If you said answer choice A, C, and D can be crossed out, you are correct, okay? So that leaves us with answer choice B, 16. So looking at one side, the closest side to us, we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight corners. So since there's there are eight corners on one side or eight vertices on one side and we have a three-dimensional figure, we have to consider on the other side as well that there are eight vertices. So eight plus eight is equal to 16. Moving on to question four. The graph below shows the number of packages Blanca delivered on five days. Which table best represents the information in the graph? Okay, so for question, for answer F, we have for Monday, the number of packages is 48, Tuesday, 30 were delivered, Wednesday, 66, Thursday, I mean, 54, Friday, 42, okay? For G, for Monday, it's 48, Tuesday, 36, Wednesday, 72, Thursday, 48, Friday, 60. For answer G, the number of packages delivered on Monday are, were 48, Tuesday, 30, Wednesday, 66, Thursday, 42, Friday, 54. And lastly, for J, on Monday, the number of packages delivered was 48, Tuesday, 30, Wednesday, 42, Thursday, 66, Friday, 54. What are we looking for? We are looking for the table that best represents the information in the graph. So what information can help us find the answer? So what we need to do is look at our graph and write down how many packages were delivered for each day. And in looking at the graph, we see on Monday, Blanca, Blanca delivered 48, on Tuesday she delivered 30, on Wednesday she delivered 66, on Thursday she delivered 42, and on Friday she delivered 54. And in looking at the graph for the number of packages, it's counting by six. So even though that first line, we started at zero, then the first line is six, even though there's not a number there, the next line is 12, we see the 12. So the line after that, that does not have a number, is 18, 24, moving up, 30, we see the 36, 32, I'm sorry, not 32, 42, 48, 54, 60, 66, 72, okay? So again, the graph, is counting by sixes and it's only showing a number every other number so again you don't see 
the six after zero, but we know that that's what number it is, then it's 12 and after that, 18 on and on, okay? So that is how we got the numbers at the bottom. And looking at that graph, we saw that she delivered, again, Monday, 48 packages, Tuesday, 30 packages, Wednesday, 66, third, Thursday, 42 packages, and Friday, 54 packages. Now, now that we have our information, are there any answer choices we can cross out? So what we're going to do is take that data that we got from the graph and look at the tables to see which answers we can cross out that do not match um, the number, the day, and the number of packages that were delivered. If you said answer choices F, G, and J can be crossed out, you are correct. And that leaves us with one answer choice, H. H is the correct answer. Let's move to problem number five. Andy has trumpet practice four times every month. Every month. Each practice lasts two hours. What is the total number of hours that Andy will practice in nine months? Okay, let's read that again. Andy has trumpet practice four times every month. Each practice lasts two hours. What is the total number of hours that Andy will practice in nine months? A, 72, B, 156, C, 36, D, 104. What are we looking for? We are looking for the total number of hours that Andy will practice in nine months. What information can help us find the answer? Well, first, looking at the problem, we know that Andy practices the trumpet four times every month. And so for each time he goes, he practices two hours and we're looking for the total number of hours for nine months. So I set it up, the total hours is equal four times every month times two hours because he practices uh, two hours every time he goes to trumpet practice. And we're looking to see how many times, I mean, how many hours he has practiced in nine months. Now that we have our expression to find the answer, are there any answer choices that we can look and see may be wrong that we can cross out, okay? Again, so total hours is four time, times two times nine. If you said you could mark out answer choices B, C and D, you are absolutely correct, okay? Why? Because B, 156, that's incorrect. C, 36, now looking at our, and that C could be kind of like a trick because if we look, we could get 36 if we multiplied four times, um, four times a month, times nine months and not consider that he practices two hours, that is a way we could get 36. That's why it's really, really important to find out what information, number one, what you're looking for, and then what information can help you solve the problem. Because if we didn't take in consideration that two hours, that Andy practiced the, the trumpet two hours every time he went to practice, then we would have said, oh yeah, 36 is correct, four times nine is 36, but not think about that two hours, okay? So you have to pay very close attention. And then D, 104 is incorrect as well. That leaves us with our correct answer, A, 72. Four times two is eight. Eight times nine is 72. So Andy practices the trumpet 72 hours, will, will practice 72 hours in nine months. This is Shay Jackson with High Math. I truly enjoy going over a third grade math test prep video with you. If you would like to see more videos, go to www.hypemath.com.
www.thepurposefulmama.com. Talk to you later.